Kia ora and welcome to episode 302 of the Stag Raw. This episode I'm joined by Mitch Jacobson. Had the awesome pleasure of playing with Mitch at Hotapu Rugby Club in 2016 and 2017. Um, Mitch, of course, in that first season was in and out of the NZ Under 20s. When I say in and out, I mean off to tournaments for them and then back to play with us. Um, and of course, Mitch has been with Waikato since 2015. Um, he's had a run out for the Chiefs in 2019. He was with the Sunwolves in 2020, unfortunately, plagued with COVID. And uh, Mitch has just come back from winning the MLR with the New England Free Jacks. They uh, beat Manonu's team, San Diego, in the final there after beating um, Kurt Baker's team, the uh, DC Old Glory in the conference finals. Uh, Mitch has been a big leader when it comes to New Zealand schools captain. He's been Waikato captain. He's the current co-captain um, at Waikato. As I said, he was the Hotapa captain. He ended up captaining New England. He even captained Cambridge High. Um, he's an absolute legend. Continues to play awesome rugby. He's an absolute menace on the field, actually. Um, I talked about watching him play against the Southland Stags in round one. And um, yeah, him and Peter Asu, <laughs> um, they were just absolute chaos for, for Waikato, especially in that first half where, geez, I thought Waikato was going to run away with it. Um, thankfully, the the Stags held on and, 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 and got it together and it uh, wasn't quite the wide wash, but Waikato taking away that po- those points. So lots of uh, good stuff here. We sort of go all over the place. Um, we recorded this via the internet. So a little bit patchy. Sorry if the uh, audio doesn't come through quite so smoothly. Apologise for that. But um, yeah, nonetheless, an awesome conversation with a great man. Um, Mitch and I were part of uh, a court session at Hotapu, which I think ended court sessions for a little while there. (laughs) Um, Nonetheless, a good night, a good season, um, especially for us and the development team. We won two on the trot while I was there. And then that sort of stemmed into, I think, two or three on the trot for the Hotapu Premiers. And of course, they've won again this year up Hotapu. Enjoy. This is just my bedroom. Oh, for, a, okay. for a while there, I had everything set up in a spare bedroom, but then got another bed so sort of relegated to a box and then yeah now set up here in the in the bedroom yeah You're in the corner yeah so what, what are you studying Are you back doing engineering or what no i'm just uh finishing off a couple of papers in quantity survey nice. just through open polytech so it's just uh got to three papers left I'm just doing one on through correspondence at the moment and i just wanted to see what it was like doing it online you know and it's actually been quite good so i'm about the last two online which will be nice and have you started that since getting home uh yeah yeah just got back into it once i got home um I'd be, i've been doing it over the last couple of years um just bits and pieces here and there and and just needed to take it off eh? otherwise it'll never get done <laughs> mate you've still got plenty of good years at left in you I, I saw a um list of rugby players that are playing NPC that are born in the 90s today. And you, you've had one run out for you the other day, old Aaron Cruden. What was that like having him in camp, man? Yeah, how good, eh? Um, awesome, actually. He, Funny story, he has been over in Bali for the last two weeks and uh, he's been, he's answered the call to come in and help Waikato out. So he came and played that game without having even trained with us. So he, he was only meeting the boys for the first time the day of the game and Ran out on the field, played 20 minutes, and played bloody well. Well, as we know from your coach, Adam Thompson, there's something in the water in, in Bali. It's, it's rejuvenating and, and refreshing, so no, no doubt he could just get straight out into the field and, and into it. Yeah, mate, I might be heading over there in the off-season, eh? Get a little bit of <laughs> rejuvenation going on, sort these old bones out, and come back and play some decent footy. <laughs> so you, speaking of rejuvenation, you said you got a shoulder nickel. What happened? Was that against uh, the Mighty Stags at Rugby Park, or did you get to go one more after that? Yeah, it was against the Mighty Stags at Rugby Park. Um, just a bit of a shoulder on shoulder and um, oh. caused, caused a little bit of a tear in the labrum, but the labrum tear is in a 
is in a good spot, so to speak, um, that it doesn't get affected when tackling, but it was just quite inflamed and was a bit painful. So sort of been taking it easy over the last couple of weeks, but looking to return, not this weekend coming, but the weekend after against Wellington. So looking forward to that. Have you had anything more major happen to that shoulder before or just sort of AC sort of stuff? Uh, yeah, I have. I've, I've done a pretty serious AC joint uh, injury to it, but I've also dislocated it and had the uh, full surgery on it and had the latter day and stuff. So sort of it felt like I might have done it again, but um, thankfully that wasn't the case because so it's a long six months <laughs> in, a, in a sling and waiting to get back out there if that's the case. Yeah, man. So obviously uh, we spent over in the USA. What's it like being back in Cambridge? I was thinking today, like, what was it that um, you learned from Kano going to Hamilton Boys that you and Luke decided to stay at Cambridge? Like, what, what was the go there? Uh, I think Luke and I were just reasonably fortunate with the group that we had at Cambridge High School uh, in terms of the rugby group that we came through with. I think Kane was always had well, he, he wanted to play in that Super 8 competition. Um, and maybe the year that he was in Cambridge High School, first 15 from memory, I can't remember too clearly. Maybe they weren't as strong. Um, and, he, and he wanted to, to play for Hamilton Boys. But Luke and I, well, can only speak for myself really, but I was I was really enjoying Cambridge High School and the group of boys that were there at the time. And we were playing good footy. And, and um, I was, you know, get, well, Boys at Cambridge were getting recognised for representative rugby, so it wasn't. It didn't seem like too much of a hindrance being in Cambridge uh, rather than Boys High. I'm not too sure what the rugby level looks like at Cambridge High School at the moment, but um, back then it was it was at a decent level. That was pretty good. So you went on to even the secondary schools team out of there, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, Luke and I both made secondary schools from Cambridge High, and Luke made up. Oh, sorry, and Kane made it from Boys High. Yeah, and were you were you leader of secondary schools, kept, captain? No. Yeah, yeah, managed to um, get the captaincy for schools that, that year as well. So you've done that like quite a f- few places. What do you think it, that comes from? You know, is it? Is it and it seems to be pretty early on. Like you went straight into New England and got the armband. What what is that like? <laughs> yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, <laughs> I do, yeah. I, the situation that happened in New England was actually I didn't I didn't go straight into captaincy. I was in a leadership role, sort of in the leadership group and in the defensive group and stuff like that, which is which is no worries. But uh, Josh, our captain, he's a Kiwi, he's a fellow Kiwi as well. He's been over there for the last couple of years. He ended up dislocating his shoulder quite uh, well, yeah, badly in in one of the games, one of the game early on games. And he was out for the rest of the year. And uh, a couple of games after that, I think the head coach called me in and just asked if I'd be keen to uh, have a crack at captaining the team. And sort of by that time, I was feeling reasonably comfortable with all the boys and that. So I thought I'd give it a crack and see how it goes. And I suppose looking back at it now, it's not something you can give a crack and then be like, oh, actually, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, you know. So And, and, it, and it worked out well. It was um, yeah, it was a bit on the plate at, at times, especially like a different environment where I suppose I've been with quite a few of the boys in the Waikato team for quite a while now and you can lean on them and, and know what you're going to get from various boys, whereas it's a, a new group, group in New England and it took a little bit of time to get, I don't know, find my feet. But yeah, I think it ended up all, all going all right. You had a familiar face in Spencer Jones, though. Like, what, what was it like yeah. reconnecting with him? <laughs> yeah, no, Spencer's a good man. Eh? He was, uh, he was, so when I first went over there, I was living um, about 10 minutes away from most of the boys. I lived with another couple, uh, and there wasn't too much around us. So whenever times were pretty quiet, I'd, I'd head up to where Spencer was living, and he was in a bit of a house with sort of six or seven other guys. So there was always... Uh, from our rugby team, so there's always something going on. So I spent quite a bit of time with him, a few nights out, and, um, all the rest of it. But yeah, he's good. Eh? He's pretty happy-go-lucky and pretty chill with everything. And he's been playing some good code. He's a, he's a good footy player, and he's obviously representing Canada at the moment. And went over and played in that those Tongan tests. So it was good. Good to catch up with him and uh, spend a bit of time with him. Yeah, he's, he's a good fellow. Eh? 
Yeah, he loves hanging out with the Tongan boys as well, eh? <laughs> he, does. he does like the Island boys. He does well. He, he's quick he's, uh, he's quick to throw a docks out there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, he's good he's good at I think he's gone over there and connected with um one of the boys came over from Tonga and went to Cambridge High School and Spencer went over there and met their family and spent a bit of time over there. So yeah, it doesn't mind mixing it up. Yeah, man. So how did the sort of scouting sort of scenario happen to get you over there? Uh, well, I sort of, I got to the end of last year's NPC and hadn't had anything from any, well, anything notable from Super Rugby. I got a little bit of interest around a replacement player gig for the pre-season, but that's sort of generally only eight weeks and then you got to wait to see what's happened, what, what happens. But, um, I was pretty keen on trying something different and having a good block of footy locked in you know it was sort of six six months over in the mlr and sort of reached out to the agent and asked if he knew of anything and he, he got in touch with a few different people with a coach that he knew and he was keen and sort of linked up that way you didn't even get caught up in the austin and la sort of shit that sort of kicked off the seat or no it was either last year but sort of you know defeating champions and then not allowed to come back that would have been a bit of a rigmarole eh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it sounds like a few boys made some decent money out of those teams. So, I mean, <laughs> it wouldn't be too bad. But, <laughs> but no, no, no I, uh, I didn't get caught up in any of that, uh, thankfully. But yeah, talking to some of the boys, it sounds like some guys were getting some some pretty good wickets. And uh, I see that there is an LA team back this year, but it's under a different, it's under that uh, Atlanta brand. So, I don't, yeah, I don't know how that works, but they're moving from Atlanta to LA. So, yeah. it'll be. It'll be a cool spot to go and visit and play against them if um, we go back. Yeah, now on the other end of things with Japan, like, did, did, are the club teams, are they pretty open or are they sort of tied up pretty pretty early on? Uh, in terms of the Japan rugby comp? Yeah, fo- following on from being in the Sunwolves. Like, well, what's oh, going? yeah. Yeah, so it was a bit of a shame in terms of timing-wise uh, being in the Sunwolves because previous years a lot of the boys had been – in the team and then picked up gigs with the um, with the club teams over there. But we were there in 2020, so that was when COVID all kicked off and we yeah. only played sort of two home games. I think a handful of the boys got picked up, but a lot of the boys didn't. Um, I'd love to go and play in Japan again. You know, it's, it's an awesome spot and it'd be pretty cool to experience that, that competition as well and uh, the, the lifestyle. Um, but I think that's... A lot of people's thinking and guys that have played a lot higher level of rugby than me would be trying to get over there as well. So she's pretty tough, tough gig to crack, I think, at the moment. So what did you do with yourself? Did you come back or were you sort of locked up there? <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, from memory, we'd, we'd come over to New Zealand and actually played the Hurricanes and we were supposed to go back to Japan to play a game back in Japan. And... Uh, Sorry, um, <laughs> no, that's all right. Uh, we ended up having to fly back to Aussie because Japan had uh, closed their borders, or, or they had some sort of restriction that we couldn't play over there. Um, so we ended up playing the Crusaders, Reds, and Brumbies in Australia. Mm. Uh, and then New Zealand was about to close their borders, and they just sent all the Kiwi boys home, and that was basically the last of the team. Everyone dispersed and uh, sort of. Yeah, got out of there, so it was all, it all happened pretty quickly. Um, yeah, it was different times, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember the uh, Fiji Duro hanging out um, where I used to live um, in in the Northern Rivers in New South Wales. I sort of um, located at, at Lismore there, which was some of my old coaches and stuff were helping them out and, and giving them places to go and people things to do and stuff like that. But yeah, man, what a chaos! What a chaos! Did you, did you hang out with Craig Miller much? I, I sort of had a little bit to do with Craig and, and a thing called the Otago Pre Academy back in Dunedin. Like, obviously, he went on and played for Japan and, and done well over there. But what, what was it like having a ki- Kiwi prop there that's, you know, Japanese rep? Um, he might have been, he might have left just a year before because the uh-huh. year that I was playing Sunwolves was the year when uh, the J- Japanese top league had changed their season. So, a lot of those guys weren't playing for the Sunwolves. They lost a lot of depth. Um, so, so they pulled in the bin just like me to cover. So, I didn't have to meet Craig, unfortunately. Oh, bugger. Yeah. 
And uh, did you get get to do much with Brad Tucker in in the states, or like you would have played with him in Waikato early on, right? Yeah, yeah, played with him at Waikato, and I, I linked up with him um, in the teens over in Hong Kong, uh, Penguins as well. So, and obviously play a lot with his brother James. Mm. Um, yeah, Brad's a good fellow. We we played uh, New York a couple of times, and I think he only played the second time we played against him. Yeah. Because he'd, he'd been out with a little bit of an injury, but he's got a pretty good uh, reputation over there. He got, I think, he got player of the season in his in the first year of the competition. So yeah, that was with Sam Fran, I think it was. He, he did yeah, yeah well. he, with a different team. So um, yeah, but linked up with him, um, but yeah, only 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 for a short while, or a bit of a catch up after the game, eh? Because even though New York is theoretically close, it's still sort of a three and a half, four hour drive away. And um, got down there once uh, in our off season, which was nice. But yeah, yeah, there was a lot of Kiwi boys playing over in the competition, which was quite nice actually. Yeah, no glory yet to face off with them qualification final, right? Yeah, yeah. So we played them three times, and they had uh, quite a few Kiwi boys in there, and they had uh, the Hawks Bay coach who was a Kiwi as a Kiwi as well. Uh, what? So what was what's the level of competition like? Like you know, yeah. Enter a final, you got Manu standing opposite you, and then like then there's a couple of local guys. What was this? How's this sort of work? Yeah, I suppose there's a whole thing. Eh? Um, I guess in a way, in a in a diluted way, similar to the Japanese competition, where they have you've got a threshold that you have to hit. Uh, oh, sorry, you've got a threshold with the foreign policy, so you're only allowed. Uh, depends on. You can trade for foreign spots and stuff in, in the draft, but I think we might have had 12 foreign spots um, and maybe San Diego, similar. So, yeah, I mean, Martin Ono, he's, he's reasonably old now, but he's still still got um, quite a bit going on. Uh, so, yeah, it was quite a hard case lining up against Martin Ono in the final. You know, you got so much respect for him, watching him <laughs> all through the childhood and, and even into the teenage years, you know, just dominating for New Zealand, loving him. And then uh, you're coming up against them, trying to, you know, trying to beat him and trying to smash him or his, his teammates. So it was quite a hard case. But I guess the level, uh, back to your question, the level would be a bit below Mighty Ten Cup, you know, sort of, uh, you know, I guess in the Mighty Ten Cup, you've got all the Super Rugby boys, which is that, which is that next level. Uh, whereas MLR would would be uh, the next the next crop down and. I guess the Canadian boys and the American boys. Um, we we only had a handful of Americans in our team as well. We, we had a lot of Canadians, which also counted for local boys. So it'd be sort of that, those sort of top teams in a in a premier competition in New Zealand, up global, a little, little bit above that. Yeah, I'd say um, more towards might attend than, than club, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, Hotapu might be able to push push some of the lower teams definitely well they would be able to push some of the lower teams definitely but i think that the better teams um you would have no no dramas with like top club teams here yeah yeah nice and so what's the sort of atmosphere like like is the tailgating you know you're playing on astroturf i've, I've played on that at college rifles it's pretty nice yeah. stuff like <laughs> what, what's what's the sort of around it like yeah, well, actually, I thought that was one thing I was really impressed with was just how the Americans got in behind the sport. You know, they they didn't really know what was going on. They didn't really know the rules. And, oh, you know, like you speak to so many people after the game and, oh, that was my first rugby game, but I loved it. But they would, they would turn up really early, do the tailgating thing. If they're not tailgating, they're in their actual venue and they'd have um, – beer tasting and bands on before the game so it was quite like a festival atmosphere mm-hmm. and even when it was cold and shitty weather a lot of people would come out and um, it was just a good event for them you know um so they'd come out get on the beers and be very vocal throughout the game we had a we had a stadium that held five thousand people and we, I think we might have sold it out once, but we sort of averaged between three and a half to four and a half thousand people, and it was a good atmosphere. You know, it was nice and loud, and it was perfect size stadium for for what we were doing. And it sounds like, obviously, it was my first year this year. It sounds like it was a, a improvement on next uh, on last year as well. You know, it just improved every game, and once the weather started getting nicer, 
more and more people came out. And then once the rugby would finish, they'd have a band on after the game as well. So it was, yeah, like I say, it was a real event and it was, it was an awesome atmosphere. And were they still lacrosse and, and football markings on the, on the field as well? Or? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they had a lot of lacrosse trainings there. Uh, and we, we weren't there for football season, but uh, yeah, they, they had the football markings on there as well. Nice. And, and sponsorship wise, you had the sort of man wipe things on, on the bottom of your shorts. And <laughs> I saw the old thorn, thorn supplements there. What was that sort of, sort of support like? Yeah, they seem to get uh, some good good sponsors on board. They had these uh, like recovery shoes called Ufos, and they were they they came in and gave all the boys slides and different shoes, and um, so that was quite cool. And then, yeah, Dude Wipes is actually a massive company over there. They do uh, hygienic wipes for for, for men. Um, How'd they go? Know. Did did you get a trial? I, I didn't even get a sample. Eh? I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was a little bit disappointed with that because um, our sponsors were quite good at turning up and and um, hooking the boys up with various things. We were we were trying to there was a group of us that golfed. We were trying to lock in a golf club, you know, to get some special rates and stuff. But we couldn't quite do that before the end of the season, um, unfortunately, because the golf courses over there are reasonably expensive. So it'd be nice to get a, a little deal on deal on something going on over there. Yeah, I was watching that documentary of you guys. The owners seem to be sort of quite involved and send you video messages and stuff like that. Who was, sorry? The owners seem to oh. send, send you video messages and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was, um, yeah, quite a bit of involvement. And even even from some fans that were like hard out fans, the team would get them involved as well, which was quite interesting. You know, that was a bit new for me. Um, some of these fans are... Uh, and uh, interesting characters, but you know, made 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 the fabric of the, of, of New England uh, free jacks. So, yeah, like like I say, the owners got it behind it. At, at that final in Chicago, they were all there, and they were stoked with the outcome. Obviously, and just uh, keen to enjoy it and enjoy it with all the boys. Yeah, and what was with the yee 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 thing going on? That was uh, that was one of our. Uh, assistant coaches he just yeah I, I don't know how it started but yeah all the boys just just caught on board and and, and started doing that yeah I, i'd forgotten about that until you said that just now actually <laughs> yeah i was watching watching that documentary i was like this is this is crook these guys just keep keep going for it and go for it and go for it and just one yeah, more, yeah, one was yeah. started and carry on <laughs> <laughs> what else have i got down here oh um you must have done some early interviews, Mitch, um, for like under twenties and shit. Like some of some of the uh, your heroes were written down as Taylor Lautner and Caitlin Jenner. Would you, would you still have dinner with those two men? <laughs> oh, crikey! I put that down here, right? And, and I think and I think um, Boz was also one of your heroes. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a bit of a G up or something. Eh? No, I don't know if Caitlin Jenner would be up there anymore. Eh? I don't know. <laughs> Not, not because of any, any. I don't know. I don't know why I would have put that. Maybe she, he, she, she was they. the they, <laughs> them they were the hot dog. <laughs> you, you also uh, said that you needed your favourite workout was calf raises. What's, what's the story there? Yeah, that might have been a doubt because that would, that would have to be one of the uh, worst body <laughs> muscles on my body. Yeah, hey? I just, I've got a. Just a straight line calf, you know. I've never had any definition, just a, nothing there. It's all genetics, isn't it? So I've just been unlucky. <laughs> Whereas yeah. you've got a great calf on you, don't you, Stag? Oh, it's just it's just from trying to climb hills, but I think they blow up. They're no good, mate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got the hills, and they just they feel like they're going to explode. The old, um, I think I've got mini compartment syndrome going on. <laughs> it's it's, it's oh. no, no, no bloody good. Yeah. Do you still like the Broncos? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, yeah, and they are going pretty well this year. But I'm not sure. I think uh, I don't know who I'd be supporting if if the Broncos were to play the Warriors. You know, I think I'd have to go for the Warriors. Uh, it's just the, the patriot in me. Yeah, well, um, I've I'm a Roosters supporter, and we're currently sitting just out. There's like a bit of a log jam on thirty points between them, the Cowboys, and the Rabbitohs, and I think Cowboys and Rabbitohs are playing each other. Well, they, they might be right, and then I think yeah, the Roosters have got to beat the Dolphins. No, that's the Warriors, isn't it? 
No, oh. the Roosters are playing the Rabbitohs this weekend, actually. Oh, is it Roosters, Rabbitohs? Right. So they're yeah, whoever wins, I think. Oh, and then I think it's and then I think it's uh, Cowboys versus the Panthers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so it's just going to be a bit bit of bit of gnarliness. Yeah, yeah. That rugby league competition is bloody good this year. Eh? I mean, just the diff- like the competition between you know all those spots. It could be it could go down to anyone. Eh? That top eight, which is so interesting and so good to watch. Oh fuck. It's a bloody internet person trying to call me. Oh no! <laughs> trying to tell me some shit. Um, okay. how, how are you finding the NPC this year? Like, obviously, Hawks Bay was was pretty gnarly. Um, Brad Weaver got it back over here. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, and and then counties on on Sunday you did did well against them. Like, you know, familiar faces as well. What, what, what's it like? You know, a few years in now, Mitch. Um, yeah, well, the NPC, I always, always really enjoy the NPC as a competition. Um, obviously, only having played one game myself this year, but been heavily involved uh, since then in terms of um, just like route to review and preview and, and obviously being around the boys, which is which has been great. Um, we, yeah, like you say, we, we got a bit unlucky against Hawks Bay. You know, we sort of ran out of steam with about 10 minutes to go. We're trying to hold on, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't. And then Bay of Plenty and uh, against Taranaki, we took losses against them as well. And I think the Bay of Plenty and Taranaki games, we were pretty disappointed with ourselves with with how we performed and, and the mistakes that we made and the opportunities that we gave the opposition. But um, looking forward, like we, we really needed that win against counties yesterday, you know, just for a bit of confidence, yeah, for the, for the competition as well. But um, the boys, you know, once you would have been four losses in a row if we'd have fallen over against counties and um it would have boys would have started to doubt themselves a little bit you know the mental game starts to come in so that that win hopefully sparks something um there was probably about 25 30 minutes of there and of really good rugby and, and how we want to play um and like you say about about the familiar faces good to see jimsy playing for counties wasn't it yeah man i saw that good photo with ollie and ollie and jimsy i was like oh there you go the lads <laughs> yeah 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 he um he actually still lives with Ollie, so he oh, tra- travels up every day to go to track. <laughs> so he's got a hard case. And Ollie, Ollie, I don't think would have been able to handle it if Jimsy got the wood over him. Actually, Jim, Jimsy put a good shot on Ollie, and Ollie dropped the ball. So I think he got a bit of a, a bit of lip service then. Is Chucky still at um, Tasman? No, no, he's in Bay of Plenty. I understand. Oh, he's oh, right. Last year, no, I think he's just been recontracted to Bay of Plenty again. Um, so yeah, the, the two brothers haven't played together yet, but they've played against each other plenty of times. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was good, good watching those couple of finals he had against Tasman. It was like, who's gonna win? <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it was good, eh? No, it was awesome. So, you, you're hoping to get back for Welling, Welling, that's that's gonna be a um, big game against uh, Duplessis. Yeah, yeah, always, always big games against Wellington, eh? They're pretty big physical boys and they're going really well at the moment, yeah. Do you still keep in contact with him? With two percent? Uh not really, no, no. I never really like he was a couple of years younger than me. He was more Luke's age. Yeah. Um when he was coming through and he, he didn't spend too much time in the Waikato, maybe one or two years and then um shot down the wellies for an opportunity and he's obviously kicked on really well down there. Yeah, no, it's a, it's been an interesting watch. I remember rolling for Fraser Deck and then he all of a sudden you see him, you know, just sort of like I say, take off when he got down there. It was it was pretty amazing, eh? So it's pretty yeah. incredible, incredible how that can happen. Eh? You can be in one system and then just change the scenery and, and all of a sudden you hit your straps. Yeah, you see what happened with a lot of boys, don't you? I mean, even a guy, Jerome Brown, um, I don't know if you remember him. He uh, played maybe a handful of games for Waikato and he played played for Melville. Yeah. Um, and then he went over to the Brumbies and was playing for the Brumbies and talking about him playing for the Wallabies at some stage if he gets qualified, you know, so... Yeah, it's, it's it's like anything. You need the right guys backing you in, and you never know what where you could go at. Eh? Yeah, and again, Br- Brumby's like out of Henry Spate. You just you know, he's yeah, Christian Lele as yeah. well. Yeah, Christian. Yeah, which of course now the so international stuff. Him playing for Samoa is just like oh, the World, yeah. World, World Cup is pretty exciting. Yeah, it will be. And I mean, there's a few games in the weekend where or Samoa came close to Ireland and Fiji beat England, so it's, it's going to be all on, isn't it? Yeah, Luke never got back on the field, eh? Was that right? No, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> well, I, I missed. What did Scott Barrett actually do? 
Uh, I can't remember what his first card was for, but then his second one was like a ruck infringement. He went through and played the nine oh. when the ball was still in or something. Was, yeah, they're pretty... Oh, sorry, and one of his was a clean-out uh, clean to the head, but it sounds much worse than what it was. I don't know. Yeah, there was a few penalties in the game, wasn't there? Yeah, I, was, I saw the ACC were commenting that they should rename rugby refereeing. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tough watch. It was a tough watch. Yeah, yeah. Um, from from your perspective, going back to NBC, like the media are trying to sort of rub it off and say, you know, in the in the different unions are trying stuff and playing games in different places and all that sort of thing. Like, you know, as as a as a fan, like I've been, I've been watching Southland and like we haven't been winning, but it's been awesome to see young guys grab confidence. Um, like especially the game against Otago the other night, they started getting breaks through the line finally and, and sort of putting things together as a season. It must be pretty pretty awesome, and you know, start to connect with the clubs and the unions and and sort of drive people through into people developing into Super Rugby. Like surely, surely that from your perspective, right? There's there's a different place for for the UBC, eh? Yeah, yeah. Personally, I, I think yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, like NPCs that that next level up from club rugby and I've, I've played a, um, maybe just under 10 games of super rugby and what I found was the, the step from club rugby to my, uh, sorry, MPC is um, much greater than the step from MPC to super rugby, you know, I think there's a definite need for that level and like you say, you, you've still got um, your seasoned super rugby players running around but then you've got your young young guys that are fresh on the scene maybe from New Zealand 20s or, or have come through the the grades to make it to a Waikato or Southland or, or something like that and having a crack on, on the big stage, you know, and see how they fare against these this quality opposition. Um, yeah, there is a, a little bit of a strange time at the moment in terms of where NPC sits and what New Zealand rugby want to do around that space, you know. Um, I, I certainly don't have the answers around that. I know it sounds like financially it's a little bit of a, a burden to the New Zealand rugby union, but uh, maybe that's a product of of Super Rugby, who knows? Yeah, and I was, I was just sort of thinking, like, there was a guy playing for Otago that had played for John McLashan last year, and he was on the wing. And it's like, what's the message from the Players Association around um, professionalism and longevity? And, like, you know, especially when you've got the opportunity, you're young, you're, you're starting to look back on a career now, Mitch, but, like, that, that ability to, to, you know, get in a bit of study, maybe not necessarily going full-time in your study, but, you know, get something under you about play good rugby, and you know, learn about a whole bunch of stuff about yourself, you know, before before you're uh, twenty five type stuff. Yeah, I think it's I think it's that's an awesome opportunity, you know. And I mean, everything's starting younger and younger in terms of rugby. Um, guys are getting picked up sort of first or second year out of school, but those guys that aren't in the top the top crust that are getting picked up in that first or second year, they've got yeah, like you say, they've got that opportunity to get bit of experience outside of rugby along with that rugby hit as well, you know. So sort of get the best of both worlds. A lot of guys get their apprenticeship or, you know, get a couple of years in study and then do do what I'm doing and chip away at um, study part time. Um, yeah, I think it is it's massive in, in somebody's development. And yeah, I've I've really enjoyed it and the opportunity to earn a bit of money and play on T V and play play for your union that well you know, like that for me was where I've grown up, which has been awesome to grow up and play uh, for a province. Yeah, you know, I, I grew up. In. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome, man, and it's it's been cool to see so many people from Hotapu. Like, obviously, they had a good good year this year, winning the winning the comp again. But um, to see you know the Waikato team, so many uh, family faces is pre- pretty cool. Yeah, hundred percent. Sorry, Stag, I'll just grab a charger real quickly. <laughs> um, just on. What's your t-shirt there? Oh, just a little Stacey Jones Warriors thing, eh? <laughs> Where'd you pick that up? Oh, I got it online a couple, oh, like a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a little general thing. I don't know. I think it was maybe some bootleg guy who's just selling off a few different t-shirts and saw it and thought, uh, like, 20 bucks or something, so grabbed one. Yeah. I, um... With the Carisbrook under 85 team, I think Boz did them up a a, a champions t shirt. I bought one of those, but unfortunately, the missus hates it, so it's uh, st- <laughs> stayed in the drawer a little bit. It's of that same sort of style. Yeah. Get it out when she's away, mate. 
<laughs> yeah, but I check it on a few podcasts and things like that. Yeah, um, with, with the under twenties, is is that timing because of the norm, northern hemisphere? Like, I was just sort of thinking it would be great if under twenties players could sort of be in a provincial academy, but because of the timing, they sort of need to be in the super academy, eh? Hey? Yeah, so that's right. So um, my understanding is uh, that there's like 15 under 20 boys contracted to uh, like franchise development contracts and they, they train with super rugby teams for the first 10 weeks of the year or or, or it might be a little bit more. Um, yeah, I think that's just the time that the competition's always been and unfortunately if it's in the Southern Hemisphere then you're you're playing in winter, um, and if you're in the northern hemisphere, then you're playing in summer. So, uh, w- I had one competition in 2014. We played in New Zealand, and it was in the winter, and it was bloody miserable. And then uh, the next year, we we're in Italy, and it was in in like 34 degrees. So, yeah, it's a bit of funny timing, but I suppose there'll be some some rules that world rugby, you know, put in place that that's that's the time that it has to be held. Yeah, and I suppose they don't they don't want to end up. In, in the road of the um the World Cup, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, everything makes way for that. I think that's why we've got a storm week in NBC. Yeah, yeah. Um, did many guys from your team roll into the Sevens comp in the States? Oh, in the States? Yes, there were some doing Sevens over in the States, but I can't remember what it was called. Um, they were just playing for uh, different teams. Uh, and they get a bit of money for it, but I'm, I, I can't remember what they were called. The sevens comp. Yeah, I think that's that's where Rubatui's gone to to play in the play in the state sevens competition. Oh yeah, get a bit of money over there. Yeah, yeah, I think that was the that was the scenario. She was sort of the marquee marquee player. Oh sure, how good she's done quite well for herself, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah, and gone gone on to the comments as well, which is which is pretty good. You know, she, I, I remember. Um, with Christchurch, we went up to, or Canterbury, sorry, we went up to the Mount Sevens and the women's final, she just picked up the mic and started commentating the whole game um, out at the Mount Park there and, and just yeah, off the cuff and yeah, so it's pretty funny to see her follow through into into the comments um, for, for games and stuff like that, but yeah, no, she's big personality, eh? Yeah, she is, yeah, and no, I think she's, um, yeah, trying to well, pioneering that, that women's game, eh, which definitely needs someone to do that for them, and I think they've been really reasonably successful, although I do hear that the NRLW, uh, the league team in Australia, is starting to take the the top players from our union competition, so that's a bit tough for them. Yeah, well, it's kind of like my my grandfather had a story about playing rugby league and stepping on a rugby field and getting abused, and then like as the Warriors came up, it was kind of like, you know, John Kerwin... Mark Ellis and, and things like that get jumping ship and it was like, oh, what's going to go on here? And then professionalism and, and men's rugby started and now what, we're 30 years on and the same problem's happening for the women's game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't know how you combat it because it sounds like there's a whole lot more money over in the Aussie competition than what there is in the New Zealand rugby union competition here. So you know, I guess at the end of the day, um, money talks, eh? Right? Yeah, I had a conversation with the between two beers guys about um, soccer in New Zealand. Of like, how do we how do we get around the whole professionalism thing? And he said, well, part of it's the funding model that most of the clubs get their funding from pokies and and liquor licensing and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, so I think if it, you know somehow like rugby did, the women's game's got to find a big backer. Yeah, yeah, that's. I mean, that's easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> Seems like, like it, like a good TV deal. Don't they need it? But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Is New Zealand big enough for that? You know, for multiple big deals to come in for various sports? I'm not sure. Yeah, was like there was that rugby network in the states. Was there was there much television input? Yeah, there was. Um, there was a little bit of television input, but similar to what you're talking about, uh, the MLR is, I think they're hoping for a, a a deal with one of the TV stations over there, one of the broadcasting stations, and that's when the money will really take off. But at the moment, it's sort of just all through done through that rugby network and the odd ones done on uh, Fox or, or, or another station. I can't quite remember. But um, yeah, there was a few ones, a few games on TV. 
but yeah, they're just. I think they're going the right way about trying to grow the game. You know, <laughs> over in the states, um, they've got a salary cap and they they police it pretty well, seemingly. Um, and yeah, they're trying not to blow it up too much too early, and then then it fall over. You know, they're sort of slow burning it, which is I think the right way to go. Yeah, and like at their final, was there much of actual USA rugby? delegates and stuff there like obviously they're gearing up to host a world cup like was there much word on the street about that um i didn't see too many like official usa rugby people there was there was a lot of fans there, there was about ten thousand people at the game which was good but yeah with the usa hosting the world cup it's uh it's a bit of a shame that they missed out on the world cup this year you know and and same with canada really need those i feel those teams need to start performing what uh well better than what they have been to to start get, generating that following uh, <clears throat> excuse me yeah no it's it's gonna be gonna be interesting and and like it's been bizarre like i'd love to have a chat to sam dixon about the the seven circuit like you for so long you had the usa and canada coming up coming up coming up coming up and then all of a sudden you've seen this year you know argentina ireland um, Uruguay, Spain, like competing, You're like, whoa, what's going on? What's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. USA, um, unfortunately, have, have sort of uh, gone backwards a little bit, I suppose. But I mean, hopefully, with this competition, the MLR and, and continued funding into the sevens program because it's an Olympic sport, hopefully they bounce back. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, it's pretty pretty crazy old world out there, and like. We we in New Zealand, as we talk about, have the problem of being a small market. But then, yeah. then when it comes to the rugby, they're just like a minnow in a massive market. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you did right, and like, yeah, dominated by sports that have got a foothold over there, don't they? Yeah, and they're all very American sports. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, like football's finally. Yeah, that's, I guess that's the example for them, isn't it? Football's sort of finally come along i saw a thing the other day that was talking about the um mls clubs are valued higher than than the premier league clubs and you know you got the likes of david beckham bring bringing out Lionel messi to miami and then they yeah. go on and go on and win it's just like wow that's pretty unreal yeah that's crazy yeah there's definitely the money in the states and like you look back at the mls i think when they started back in 2006 and i think probably the mlr can really take a leaf out of their book you know they did and I think they have, they they started off pretty slowly, but it's sort of like a 10, 15, 20 year, 20 year um, vision, I think, that you've got to look at rather than just a short term, um, hopefully it gets up and, and going. But yeah, the, the MLS over there is crazy with <laughs> Lionel Messi in Miami, it's, yeah, that's a massive get. Yeah. Did you have any highlights for your time, time in the USA? No, I, I actually talking about American sports. Really enjoyed going to watch. Um, I, I didn't think I'd enjoy baseball too much, but we ended up going to about four games, four or five games, and really enjoyed that. Went to uh, the Celtics game, uh, yeah. Celtics game, sorry, NBA, and uh, didn't get to the Bruins game, but went to college ice hockey, which was awesome. Yeah, that no, was cool, and uh, just a good group of lads. A eh? good good group of fellas over there. Played a lot of golf. Well. Yeah, quite a bit of golf and um, had some good times and definitely some good nights out with because we're all living in big apartments, you know, and a lot of the boys are under the same roof, so there's always plenty going on. Yeah, it was, it was enjoyable, and especially once the weather warmed up, go out to the beaches and um, went down to New York with a couple of the boys for a, a night or two just to have a look around there and enjoy ourselves. Yeah. So did you go to the Red Sox at Fenway Park or...? Yeah, yep, yeah. Went to about four games at Fenway Park, which was awesome uh, watching that. How'd you get into that? Did you jump on a train or? No, so Fenway, uh, Fenway is right in Boston. Uh, yeah, we did jump on a train, yep. So we did, yeah. So it would have only been 10, 15 minute train uh, on the T. And were you based in Boston? You're just south of Boston. So we were in um, Dorchester, which is about 10, 15 minutes from the centre of uh, the city in Boston. Far out of this list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're in a great spot. Yeah, and and did you get to go all up and down the eastern seaboard for the games, or? So we travel travel everywhere for the games. So we go over to San Diego. Oh, so, I yeah, we went to San Diego, Utah, 
uh, Seattle, uh, down to Houston, you know, down to New Orleans, flew everywhere down to New York and um, Washington. So got to see a bit of the country, but to be fair, when we did travel away, we were usually staying in a pretty stock standard mall a bit out of the city. So we didn't see too much of the cities when we were away, but uh, yeah, we did a bit of travel. Yeah, it's a massive country to be <laughs> yeah. tripping, tripping around on. Eh? Yeah, it all looks pretty close on the map, eh? but then when you're there, it takes a while to get around. You would have got a pretty good appreciation for the conference system, eh? Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, you can see why they do it with being such a big country and the, all the different time zones and all that carry on. And were you doing like one week turnarounds? Yeah, yeah. So we had two bye weeks uh, and. 16 games and two bye weeks in, in between there, so 18 games, uh, 18 week season. Yeah. And then final, semis and finals. And that was just straight into the qualifier, straight into the final? Uh, so there was, so we qualified top of our conference, and then yeah. the next two down played a game, and then the winner of that played us, and then we went and played the winner of the Western Conference. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, Luce, it was it was pretty good to um, follow the Rejects Instagram page. Eh? It was just like, oh, look look at the boys go. Yeah, yeah, they've got a full time uh, social media man on there, and they're putting in a bit of work on some of the getting the boys dancing and doing different things on the on the Instagram page for promotions. Is he a Kiwi too? No, he's not a Kiwi. Uh, he's a, he's an American guy. Was was there a Kiwi that was sort of commentating for you guys? Or yeah, guy. Uh, wheels. Uh, yeah. Geez, what's his what's his proper names? Someone Grant. He's from Dunedin as well. He, yeah. He's young, he's twenty two, I think. Yeah, no, I, was, I started started sort of following him after hearing hearing a rolling R. But even though he's from Dunedin, he's got a ro- rolling R. Like I said, I wouldn't. Yeah. Must, <laughs> must from Belclutha or something. <laughs> he must be. He must be from further south, though. Yeah. Hard oh, out. Oh well, man. All the best for the rest of the EBC, Mitch. What you know, you've you've had a rugby career now, mate, um, and and I'm sure there's plenty to go. What sort of the thing that keeps keeps it going going along? Like season to season, you've got to sort of put yourself in you, with your best foot forward and find yourself an opportunity. But what what makes it all go well? Yeah, yeah, you're right. And um, I suppose I asked myself this. The other day, but I, I still really enjoy it. I eh? just um, enjoy the challenge of of the week on week stuff, and you know, I think it's one of the few things where you get that where you're constantly getting that feedback around how you're going, and and you get to challenge yourself every Saturday or, or week on week against opposition. And I mean, even prior to getting out against the opposition, you get to challenge yourself against your teammates and and yourself. And I just enjoy the idea of, of trying to get better and, and improve and um you know that, that whole as you know as well you know playing in any team whether it's professional or, or club footy or whatever it may be just trying to achieve a goal with a group of your mates is, is pretty fun you know and, and there's no better feeling you know than, than winning a championship or, or winning an important game where you know you've come together and, and and put a successful outing out on the field so i guess that's why you know I mean, it does get tough, you know, when you get injuries and get a little bit down on things like that, but that's all part of the game. I've, I've personally been very lucky around not having too many injuries, um, touch wood, so hopefully it stays like that. But, yeah, just still enjoying it, as I say. And I often think, you know, it could be on a building side or, or doing something much worse than running around a rugby field with the boys and playing golf on a Wednesday, you know. Uh, it's pretty bloody awesome, man. And um, yeah, it's cool to see you back. And, and I'm looking forward to seeing you back out on the field in a couple of weeks with a fit shoulder. And hopefully, you guys can uh, make it to the finals. And, and yeah, White, White Cato are in the mix again. Appreciate that, Stag. Good to, good to hear from you again, mate. And hopefully, be, everything's well with you and your family. Yeah, mate, we're doing good down here uh, in the South White Cato. <laughs> yeah, beauty. Are you? So, how long have you been parked up in Tokoro for? Uh, two years, yeah, coming up. Yeah, yeah two, two and a half years. We've been in this house coming up two years, so, you know, it's, um, it's a beautiful part of the country, you know, dairy, dairy cows everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A few things to do outdoors as well, eh, I imagine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, not not far from Purple Tukaroa and, and uh, a bit like Hamilton, you're close to everywhere, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, 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 and I'm sure there's a bit of hunting going on, is there? 
I'll try to try to do that. So I may go, go yeah. have my gun for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. Sweet. I might hit stop on that one. And uh, cheers, bro. No, no problem at all. See, enjoyed it.